Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Boomi World 2018. Brought to you by Dell Boomi. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Boomi World 2018. I'm Lisa Martin in Las Vegas at the Win with John Furrier. And we are at the second annual Boomi World with the CEO, CUBE alumni, Chris McNabb. Chris, great to have you back on the program. Lisa, it's great to be here. So your key, you know, your fireside chat this morning was really interesting, so much information there. A Couple of stats that I was researching about mm -hmm. Del Boomi recently. Uh, a leader, again, I think Michael said, maybe for the seventh year in a row, Del Boomi, in the IPAS Gartner Magic Quadrant. You're way up there. Um, you guys are adding five new customers every single day. We are. You have, and I love this as a marketer, 92% of the breakout sessions here at Boomi World have customers and partners. Exactly right. What better brand validation than that? Talk to us about this second annual Boomi World. What excites you about getting this community together? You know, the, the excitement and just being a part of this community is just, it's energizing every day. You know, what you're able to do to help customers, and, you know, solve transformation problems, have them reach out and get integration and connect and unlock data silos in the far reaches of their enterprises and leverage that data to engage their customers, their partners and employees in brand new ways. And when you look at, you know, what best in my mind in a user group meeting, Customers need to take back to their enterprise what it is that they can do come Monday to transform their business. And so we thought what else better than concrete examples from what partners have done, from what other customers have done and so on. And you know, as we, I said in the beginning of the keynote, it's so amazing to me when we had the opportunity to review all of the customers' uh, submissions about, I'd like to talk about this, I'd like to talk about that. We had so many more than we could bring on and put, make a part of our agenda. And it's one success story after another about how they're transforming their business, how they make a massive impact. Even in our partner awards, we talked about the Innovation Award and the ROI Award, and et cetera. You know, having the folks like Charter Communications and Umbra and so on come up and just really innovate. Those are the kinds of things that really drive us at this conference and I think our theme, unlimited possibilities, Hit, hit it right on the head. The possibilities for us and our customers to change businesses is truly unlimited. How important is integrated platform as a service now, now that cloud native certainly is now going mainstream, cloud SaaS business model has shown people how the subscriber model works, Yep. the flywheel is certainly going on, VMware just acquired, Heptio, which is a small startup doing Kubernetes, which kind of gets at this whole integration opportunity how has it changed in iPaaS or integrated pass? Uh, and what are the critical drivers in that market for you guys right now that's different than before? You know, integration platform as a service is on a, a tremendously evolutionary path and one that is rapidly accelerating. When you sit in a category that has, it depends upon which analyst you look at, but something in the range of 50% year-on-year growth, there's a, it attracts a lot of attention. You get a lot of people in startups, you get a lot of the mega vendors showing up, and you get a lot of the incumbents who have been around a decade like us that you know, really try and get this you know, business to go forward. That evolution pushes the progress of platforms on behalf of our customers very rapidly. It used to be the case that integration platform as a service not all that long ago was really known as cloud integration platforms. We connect cloud to on-premise. Yeah. And over the last four to five years that has completely yeah. changed, right? They are now complete middle, enterprise middleware solutions that are offered up as a service. They do on-premise to on-premise integration. They do cloud to cloud integration. They can do EDI kinds of integrations, ETL, et cetera, et cetera. Way beyond integration now. These platforms must come to the table with process integration, workflow orchestration, low code capabilities for mobile app development to engage your customers differently. MDM capabilities for data governance. Sounds like an enterprise grade, certain, these are enterprise requirements. Yes. This is not like doing a little bit of here and there integrated platform service, enterprise grade. Yes. What differentiates those two? in your mind? 
I, I think Gartner does a, a pretty good job of differentiating the segmentation in the market. They talk about enterprise grade integ integration platform as a service. People, vendors that bring all of that to the table. And then they have domain specific. You will get IOT platform as a service or you will get workflow as a service, et cetera. And those, those kind of niche providers provide deep capabilities but it's only in that one area. And you know, when we look at it, we, we, our unified platform is going to be able to dramatically reduce the complexity and, and speed people up because you can learn one thing and do many things, as opposed to having many domain specific ones and you have to learn them all. So Chris, iPaaS has been around for a while. You guys have been a leader, Del Bumi has for a long time. But as you said, it's more than integration. You guys talked about this reimagining of the I in iPaaS. I want to talk yeah. to you about that iPaaS 2.0 but also it's, it's not just about connecting applications, connecting data, new and existing sources, it's about connecting people, processes. That's right. Enabling organizations to actually use that data as the fuel that it can be to identify new products and services, get more customers, get more data, iterate, et cetera, et cetera. Talk to us about iPaaS 2.0 from Jellaboomi's perspective and what makes you guys so well positioned yeah. to take this forward? Yeah, great question, Lisa. Uh, the iPaaS 2.0 for us is really about leveraging all of the knowledge, information, and skills that all of the talented engineers have put into Boomi for the past decade. And all of the metadata from all of the programs and all of the executions and all the configurations that's ever been run on is, is, exists in our repository today. We have nearly 30 terabytes of metadata and information about data integrations and so on and so forth. It's that pile of metadata that we can leverage and we can put AI, machine learning, neural networks, et cetera, to work on to make sure that the knowledge encapsulated, encapsulated, encapsulated in that metadata repository is made available to not only engineers in, in, our, in our customers, but also their constituents. That net effect will dramatically reduce the workload on integration engineers. IT departments have, that have a list of 50 things to do can now have a list of 10 things to do, they can get to them, and we can turn them from a department of people who say no to a department that says yes to the business. And automation drives a lot of that. I want to get your thoughts on you know, um, the customer traction. You know, I was just interviewing a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, we were talking about complexity. Yeah. You don't want to add more complexity That's to right. already complex and tedious yes. tasks. Um, you guys have made good traction with making things easier. When you guys were a startup, now you're part of Dell. How are you guys continuing that forward? Is that a key part of your strategy, making things easier and simpler? Yeah, John, it's always been a key part of our strategy. You know, uh, we find that complexity is a ball and chain around people's leg when it comes to productivity and agility, right? It slows you down at a time you can't afford to be slowed down. And so what we do with our platform today, we, we allow people to learn one way to program stuff and no matter what kind of integration you want to be able to do, there's one way to do it. I don't have five different technologies to do five different types of tech or integration. With one way to do it, we generate economies of skill for our customers. Do one thing, and have it apply many things, right? removing the complexity instead of learning five different vendors' products and getting them to work together. That's one way in which we make things easier. We make things easier today based on the metadata that we've got. So with all of the, all of the programs ever written in the history of Boomi, they're all in our, a single instance of our cloud database. We're cloud native, right? And so when somebody goes in to connect. I mean you're cloud native as in like all your stuff's in the cloud. Uh, we, we are a single instance, multi-tenant cloud application. We're offered up as a service. Beautiful. Right, so, so you, when you're, I- you're living, the, you're living what your customers are trying to do. You know, when I see some of my vendors sending out you know, the, the two and three page sets of documentation on what the customer needs to do to upgrade from version three to version four, I shudder. <laughs> None of my customers ever do upgrades. That's, we, we provide them and do for them 11 upgrades a year. We skip Christmas for obvious reasons, right? <laughs> um, but so anyway, going back to you know, how we continue to make things much easier, we have a suggest capability that leverages metadata and immediately creates a mapping between system A and system B. Yeah. Even though you're new to it for the first time, my marketplace and the history of my customer base is not. 
I can leverage all that on what you're having with one click and within 30 seconds, I can get you a working integration. So born in the cloud gives you an edge. It absolutely And does. now you're in Dell, you have the power and muscle of Dell Technologies and, and Michael Dell, who sees the future, by the way, not as he's mailing it in. Yep. He sees it as super exciting. You, you asked him that question on stage today around his legacy. Yeah. And there's a lot of cool stuff happening, but a lot of unknown things coming, like voice activated systems, B2B's getting uh, cooler, less boring. Yeah. How do you see that? Yeah, listen, like, like I was saying, John, I, I, think that I, I think we're at the tip of the iceberg. I look at what we're doing today for our customers and it's just a foundation layer. Reconnecting to all of the things in your enterprise, getting into those far reaches of systems that existed for a long time and stuff is stuck in there and you can't get access, it's stuck in the cloud and you can't find it. We are breaking down all those barriers and we're making connectivity seamless. But it's, that's just the starting point for us. When you start applying AI and ML and you can start predicting failures for people, you can tell them when they're ready to you know, launch a configuration where they're running a workload, and I know beforehand that that's going to be problematic, that only handles workloads of arrival rates up to X, and you're bringing to X, we can help be that. We can encapsulate knowledge in the, in the platform and really bring on AI, ML capabilities to take them to the next level, leveraging all the smart knowledge and capabilities and en integration engineers have put into it. Speaking of impact, uh, you guys just did with Forrester a total economic impact, TEI, and there were some big numbers, big quanti quantifiable, quantitative? Uh, <laughs> business outcomes yeah. that a composite organization that works with Dell Boomi is achieving. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that kind of struck me when you were mentioning earlier is that some of the development times can be shortened by up to 70% yeah. with Dell Boomi as the unified yep. platform. IT staff becomes more productive, a lot of cost savings there. The opportunity as well to retire legacy systems. That's correct. Um, reduce the burden on IT because as we all know, technology is pervasive across the organization. So this new study really shows the significant, not just quantitative benefits, but strong qualitative benefits yeah. that your 7,500 plus customers That's right. across what, 35 countries are achieving. Absolutely right, you know, if you just look back to our ROI winner from this morning, our partner of the year, 1600% ROI on their project. I don't hear that number very often, I wish I had a few more of those in, in my drawer, but you know, Lisa, we, we are focused. Uh, you know, the, the couple of interesting things about that economic study. One, they really looked at very large organizations. Right, the, you know, when they averaged everything out, it was a $10 billion organization, it was 30,000 people, and it was an enterprise-wide deployment. Th this isn't little, but we are capable of supporting the mid-market as well as the large enterprise. And it's our techniques that I was telling earlier, like Suggest, like our economies of skill, and other things that we bring to the table that make them much faster and easier. The fact that you can do things seven times faster and so on and so forth shrinks the amount of time projects take. So think about the impact on one's business. If you schedule a project and it takes a year and you get halfway through, you can't really change your mind or take a different direction until you're kind of done because you have all this sunk cost. You're sort of stuck following that direction you established 12 months ago. Right, so if I can be seven times faster, eight times faster, I now give you many, I give you seven times more decision points throughout the year to change your mind. Yeah, I thought I was going to do that next, but technology has changed. The competition is something. My customers are asking something more of me. Those decision points result in agile, nimbleness for people's business. Our customers desire that, and that's how we talk about it. That's how we will provide them agility in their business. One last question before we break, I want to get your thoughts on the ecosystem and the community. You guys have a very community focus, I saw the showcase here, yeah. and you have an ecosystem again, now part of the Dell Technologies, but Dell Boomi had its own ecosystem. Yes. What's your vision on the ecosystem and community? What's your strategy? How are you going to grow it, nurture it, and bring them into the value proposition? John, the community's everybody's secret sauce. If you're a Boomi customer, if you're in Boomi, or, or if you're a Boomi partner, that entire ecosystem, the community is all of our secret sauce. It's the thing that's going to carry us all to more and more successes. As people participate in it, as they contribute to that, things happen, they do more in the platform, my platform learns, and the platform will turn around and provide it back. It is a wonderful, virtuous circle 
of continue to do more work, continue to get bigger, continue to grow, get smarter, deliver better results, deliver better ROI, do more work, and on we go. So you believe in co-creation, the that dynamic of bringing people into your production, into your development, we, we absolutely do, you know, being really one of the, the last truly open integration platform as a service providers on the planet, you know, many of the, the former folks have been locked down by larger vendors and, and so on and so forth or bought out by private equity, et cetera, and so now being one of the last truly open, you know, we, we don't have a stake in the game other than I want to connect everything yeah. you're trying to do, I want you to engage your customers in new ways, and I want you to transform your business. Yeah. Well, we're talking with Lucky Brand, sorry John. Yeah. Uh, Lucky Brand, a little bit later today. Terrific. Going to be an interesting story, brick and mortar, almost 30 years old, how it's not just transforming with WME as a partner, but really revolutionizing the customer experience, because as customers, we expect everything, anywhere, anytime. Yeah. So thank you so much, Chris, for stopping by. I wish we had more time to chat, but we appreciate that, and we wish you a great event at the second Del Boomi World. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Really enjoy it, and enjoy the rest of the event. Our pleasure. Thank you, John. Thanks, Chris. And for John Ferrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Boomi World 2018. Stick around, John and I will be right back with our next guest.